All right. Hello. Great to be here. Uh, so, my topic, customer obsession. Um, we probably heard a lot about this. Uh, we're all building something for users, for customers, right? Um, but what does that actually mean? Yeah, what does it mean to be customer obsessed? Um, customer is always right. What do you think? Are they always right? I wouldn't say so. No. Uh, customers definitely are boss, though. Um, an example of how customers potentially not always right. Tony specifically is Tony, but he does not want to be called Tony. Um, yeah. Customers are boss because customers can dictate uh, and make or break our business. They, especially now in the 21st century, have a very distinct way of doing that through social media. Um, have you ever wondered why that might be, right? Why social media? I mean, okay, cool, Twitter, yeah, you have that short sentence and talks about something that you're happy about, maybe not so happy about, and maybe their support team will quickly get there. Hmm. Think about it, why is that? Um, getting into it, and I'd like to give you guys a personal example being a customer, all of us here are customers, right? And users of specific products and features. Just the other day, I was having lunch with a couple of my friends, and you know, we were talking about the usual lipstick shades, unicorns, investment platforms, right? And uh, my friend was saying, yeah, you know, so I went with this specific investment platform because uh, I really felt like they're listening to me. I felt like they take my feedback seriously. And just the other day, uh, I saw that they rolled out the feature request that I had been talking about for months. And I was like, really, that's cool. And <laughs> I'm kind of waiting for her to say that, yeah, you know, their market rate is like off the charts, exactly what I was aiming for. No, she specifically chose that platform because she felt heard. She felt like her voice was important. Next story. <laughs> Another example uh, that I'd like to bring up. There was a, uh, let's say, a chain grocery store that I really love to go to. And I'm a cheese lover, let's say. And uh, 10 kilometers away from my hood, they had this burrata cheese, yeah? I'm sure most of you guys have, know how delicious it is, right? And, but the one right next to my home didn't have it. And I was like, what the heck? You know, like, why is it that it's a chain store? Usually, if it's a chain store, they should have the same amount of diff similar type of products everywhere, right? No. So me being the customer service professional, I was like, let me rate their support team, let's see what they say. So I was like, what the heck guys, like what gives? Why are you discriminating 10 kilometers south of city center? So I got like a basic response, like okay, look, we'll look into it. And uh, a week later, my burrata cheese was in the cheese department in the store and I was so happy. I felt so important, I felt heard. It was a good feeling, you know? And it got me thinking that, you know, I'm a, I'm a basic customer of a basic chain store. We all go to our specific stores. I don't know if you've ever done that. Have you ever seen that there's a product that you wish was being sold, but it, no, it, but it isn't? And you're thinking, why? You're right, you get what you want. Burrata cheese made me feel special, you know? So then it, uh, I started to think that, what is it that we're actually doing here? Uh, coming from a startup scene, uh, quite often I see my colleagues fall into the trap of looking at numbers and forgetting that there are actual people behind the numbers. We focus on building MVPs and, and targets and we look at it quarter in and out, but we actually forget that we are humans building services and products for humans. And 
that is very interesting to think about because technically, there are six psychological human needs, as you can see, significant certainty, variety, connection, growth, and contribution. Feeling heard is, in fact, specifically relevant to significance. When you're heard, when you feel that your voice is being heard, you feel significant. That feeling makes you want to get that feeling again and again and again, right? So you tend to want to stick with what makes you feel good, yeah? Um, yeah, so as a matter of fact, like I said, Barada made me feel special. <laughs> and I went to that specific grocery store over and over again. Uh, at Printify, so I'm from Printify. Uh, we're a print-on-demand platform, and we specifically provide our customers an option to earn money from anywhere in the world. If you ask me, it's quite a powerful thing. Uh, one common denominator uh, across all people from wherever they come from in the world, they like to feel heard. And as a matter of fact, in Printify, we have a very heavy focus on making sure that our customers feel heard. More specifically, I'll go a bit into that. Um, we also make sure that the people who do all of these processes that I'll get into in a second are very customer obsessed. In our hiring process, we make sure that the professionals we hire are not just skilled and like talented, but they have a specific mindset that correlates to being very customer focused. So what are these things that potentially you, if you're perhaps a founder of a startup or an investor looking to, you know, be part of something a bit more customer obsessed, there's a multitude of things that you can potentially do. And what we do at Printify is we include uh, our customer support teams wherever we can, because they are, in fact, pioneers of the customer voice. Uh, one of the things is bi-weekly customer inside our meetings. Uh, those are meetings that happen uh, bi-weekly. We have different types of uh, insights from different sources, be it Facebook or any other social media platform where customers maybe rant or give feedback about our products. Uh, we get together, product research support teams, leadership, and we outline specific issues and vote on decisions, vote on how we can potentially focus on making sure that that is no longer a problem. We also have an internal customer feedback Slack channel. It is a place where different teams have the opportunity to post snippets of uh, different customer feedbacks that they have seen, that they have received. Uh, very frequently, this is eye-opening. Sometimes you see repetitive feedback, but what is a very, very positive thing is that uh, either the product teams who are building portions of the product, they always pay attention to it and they listen. Um, yeah, that's, that's something really, really cool. Another thing that we have is Meet Your Customer Week. And this is specifically an event that happens a couple of times a year where we gather all together. It's a company-wide event and the rest of the company switches seats with the support team members. They get to practice their customer service skills. Uh, it's also, of course, a lot of customer-centered uh, activities, sometimes even uh, competitions and whatnot. So uh, very, very cool. And if you're wondering how would they be able to train or understand how to do that immediately, when a person is onboarded, they join Printify. They go not just through the company onboarding, they also go through support training. So if let's say you were to join Printify, you would spend, let's say a week, best case scenario, understanding how the support system works, what the customers are contacting us about and how they do it. Uh, another one is the support team members embedded with our product teams. Um, support team members are multi-dimensional product specialists, if you ask me. They are 
they have the best relationship with the customer and they understand the customer's relationship with the product better than anyone else in the company, if you ask me. And our teams at Printify see that as a very valuable thing and they do in fact include them in planning sessions and yes, they sit and vocalize the customer's voice. Best case scenario, we focus on those specific problems and we prioritize fixing them. And the last but not least is regular monthly customer support reports. If you're wondering what those might look like, could be something like this. Uh, short disclaimer, this is not an actual report, yeah? We do not talk about uh, needing knitted, knitted socks, but hey, who knows, you more, your product might have that kind of feedback. So yeah, as you can see, there's ma many different ways that potentially when it comes to events and collaborations that you could do, that could potentially help you to practice that customer centricity in your product, service, whatever it is that you're building. Now, at this point in time, you're probably thinking, great, fluff, blah, blah, blah. How do I measure it, right? I get it. We're all data-driven individuals. We need uh, some kind of numbers to back up and make sure that this is something you can actually apply. Don't worry. I got you. Um, there's three methods that I personally recommend to look at if you want to understand the success of your customer centricity in your business. One of them is being churn rate. Uh, you want to understand why customers leave and why customers stay in your business. You want to understand specifically what are the reasons for the dissatisfaction. You want to understand loyalty. Now, when we talk about loyalty, NPS and CSAT scores are a very good indicator whether your customers will be promoting your service or whether they will be actually doing the opposite. Yeah? So that is very important. And when it comes to CSAT scores, uh, those are usually provided after uh, an interaction with a support team member. And there's multiple different ways that you can track that and you want to always aim for something over 90%. Customer lifetime value, um, this shows specifically how much revenue are your customers bringing you and your business throughout their lifetime value from the start of the time that they start using your service till the end. If you compare those numbers to the amount of money you're spending on acquiring customers, you will see whether there is something that should be changed. Yeah, Won't go too much into details, but I think you know, you can see that there are methods of how you could potentially measure your customer centricity. And what you know what, another thing is I guarantee you that if you apply any of these methods and you have successful, great results, I guarantee you, you will be building a product that is customer obsessed. So to summarize a bit what I have talked about today, um, customers, users, you, me, want to feel heard. We want to feel significant. We want to feel special. Well, let's not forget about that. I can imagine that in the vicinity of your office workspace, there might be a poster here and there that says customer is key, customer is king, customer is everything. Do you actually apply that to your everyday work? Are you building to change a metric in your quarterly annual target or are you building something for people around you that will gain big value from it? And nobody can say it better than Maya Angelou. People will not probably remember what you said or did, but they will definitely remember how you made them feel. Thank you.